All right. Um, so are you homeless? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Um, how old are you? I'm 19. 19. And so how long have you been homeless? Okay. I'm going to say since two years. About two years? Mm -hmm. So what was it that happened a couple years ago that caused you to become homeless? Okay. So I was living with my grandma. Mm-hmm and her fiance but he was blind so they was both on like social security or whatever right the case may be so she was basically helping him because he couldn't see or pay the what? yeah basically he couldn't see so she had to pay the bills or whatever okay she been having problems with her bodies and stuff because she liked to work and i'm just like her she liked to work so it's like on and on it's like I think she had a sister in her back. And it, here we go. Here we go. She 19. She said she's been homeless for two years. Y'all can do simple subtraction addition. Y'all can figure that out, right? That, how did that even make sense? She said uh, she was with her grandma and her boyfriend that was blind. This is turned to some hood normal stuff right here. Here we go. Yeah, that's go. that ain't okay. That's not normal. The she been homeless since 17 and because some went more far left with her grandma and yeah, her we grandma. got into the parents yet god knows what we y'all know what this about to be y'all if this po sister had to live with her grandma and her grandma's blind boyfriend not husband <laughs> not her granddaddy this this her grandma her grandma's blind boyfriend this this i tell you what man this stuff being close to home is wow <laughs> <laughs> real dumb hey goodness. you be thinking stuff is one off in this world and it ain't it be under the sun, i'm saying i'm saying this i'm getting vivid pictures in my head like whoa so do y'all not understand how desperate the situation had to be with the actual parents if she was forced to live with the grandma and the blind boyfriend. Ain't none of them had no income. He on the grandma most likely was uh depending on her blind boyfriend for social security. Y'all know how that hustle go in the hood. Come on, man. And bread ran out. Maybe she got sis in her back. <laughs> Talking about cause she liked to work. Stop. Painting and just like me, and we all like to work. How y'all like to work so much and y'all homeless and stuff? What are we talking about? Stop that. Don't nobody like to work. Nobody likes to work. No one likes there to you work. Go. That's an oxymoron. In yeah, show. nobody wants to work. As a man, or I guess as an adult, you may feel a strong urge to be productive, but you don't want to work. Nobody wants to work. But you should have a need to be productive. But that's who do. Your grandma don't want to work. She don't like to work. She got sis in her back. <laughs> she come oh man she got the blind boyfriend she got sis in her back and she liked to work she don't like to work she ain't got no choice here you go ask see. grandma would you rather be laid up with a well-to-do man y'all got some oceanfront property with maids and butlers and people waiting on you at your every one thing on your feet whatever you want would you rather that or would you rather be working hard in here with this blind man y'all gotta stop people ain't got no options they gonna make this sound and look however they got to make. People got to sleep at night, y'all know. <laughs> there, there you go. So grandma gonna keep telling y'all I likes to work, baby. I'm a worker all my life. I had to work. No, that ain't what grandma want. That ain't what you want, po po sister. But well, we ain't even got into this. Uh, you know what? And we gotta stop, man. We <laughs> we gotta open our eyes. To these situations, I ain't gonna get on this post system. I'm let her go. I'm let her her, go. the backdrop. I mean, it's all looking rough right See, now. See, you know, it's rough. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. The time when she rescheduled her appointment or whatever, they telling her that she couldn't like come in for a little appointment, so it started to get worse and worse. And I, I went to my friend's house to spend the night thinking she was okay or whatever. So the next day I came back, she went, she was in the hospital. And a couple of days later, they told us that she passed away. So we didn't know that she had an eviction notice or whatever. Whoa, here we go. Big mom passed away. Everything falls apart. That's that's a that's a common thing. Big mom, big mom go, 
everything go. Everything. And I mean everything. Do y'all not understand how volatile this home situation was? The boyfriend blind, his bread running low, whatever. The grandma, she she on her way out. She in pain and agony. She got cysts in her back, cancer, whatever. And she she in a bad way. And this is eviction notice comes. She knows she laid on the rent or whatever. Everything falling apart. That had to be so bad. These cert, like I said, these are not rites of passage. These are not normal happenings that just should happen throughout the course of your life, where you end up living with your broke down, overworked grandma and her blind boyfriend. How your grandma got a boyfriend? Whatever. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. But this is this. <laughs> and here we go. So this is the answer to the question. He asked, "How did you become homeless?" And she went into this whole soliloquy because she has to give this all this context so that you understand. She can't just give you a simple answer. So this is all the context. She said, yeah, hey, grandma and her boyfriend, blind, yada, yada, yada. Grandma and sis, grandma went to the hospital. They said school, grandma died. And here we are. She had eviction notice. We didn't know. She didn't tell nobody. And here we are. Now we all on the streets, whoever was in there with her. See what I'm saying? We're in the blind. So come on, man. We're... Y'all know how this go. So there's eviction notice. You got the blind boyfriend in the house. Ain't too much help in the hood. Ain't, ain't no SOS in the hood. Yeah, I so want to hear her story. How did this all fall on grandma? We got to hear more. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Because then nobody let us know. So the eviction people came to our door and told us that we had to get out. So we've been moving to hotels to hotels. And yeah, we have enough money to pay for our hotel room. So okay, so basically, it's kind of been. She keeps saying we. I'm trying to figure out who is we. So I'm trying to. She keeps saying we have no we and we and we. And so is this the blind boyfriend she oh, tried to show mama? Like who? Yeah, yeah. Let's. I definitely want to see who we is because in the house. And she's speaking was, a lot of French right now. So yeah, I hope she ain't traveling with this blind old. Oh man, let's see. Please, 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 please. You got evicted a couple years ago. Yes. Um, and so I mean, how long after Grandma passed did you guys get evicted? I'm gonna say it's been 2020 since 2020. Right. So when she passed, how long at that point did you stay in the, the house that she was living in? I'm gonna say for since. Okay, so it was it was a couple months. It was like five or six months. Five or six months after she died? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you guys didn't know that, that the eviction stuff was coming up? No. Well, I mean, I guess some people are going to ask, why not? Because if she was the one paying the rent, then it, when she passed, how come y'all didn't think, well, who's going to be paying the rent now? Hey, I had a job and I was helping her pay it, but it's like... Things it wasn't enough or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. All right. Um, do you have any kids? No. No. No kids. Have you? Ever yeah. So she moved off of that. She ain't got no kid, but she got off of that subject. I'm a. It's safe to assume that she was traveling around with this blind man. Her grand. She had no blood ties to this man. Her grandma's boyfriend. I don't think she was responsible for that man. So uh. she did that. God bless her, man. I don't know. See what I'm saying? That ain't cool. That ain't cool at all. How do you? How do you explain this story to your future husband? So, yeah, you know, for a while, you know, I was homeless and, you know, me and my recently deceased grandma's blind boyfriend. Uh, imagine this as a man. We men. You spend your <laughs> last days with some strange young lady of some woman you probably never even laid eyes on. Probably. <laughs> Like, like this is dark on, on so many levels. I can't listen. Yeah, I'm a man. My last days, I'm being taken care of by somebody I can't see, never seen before, never seen your grandma probably before, never got nothing out of this. Y'all been taking full advantage. I mean, this is all bad. I can't even find the silver lining in it, besides the fact that I guess they're keeping this man alive. He there don't you go. Grandma, I guess I don't know. There you I go. can't call his tales of this story. Yeah, here's the thing, man. The story with um with grandma, <laughs> I 
I wonder how long ago, how long was she not working? Because she may seem like grandma was working. She liked to work. And then within the span of like three weeks, wop, wop, grandma was up out of here. So like you said, was grandma just sitting around taking, just collecting this bread from- and She said, from, I was helping with the rent at 17. You was working and helping with grandma with the rent. Um, said we should not be taking funds and resources from our children or our grandchildren. If I got to be specific, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, we should not be trying to extract resources from them. Our job is to pour resources resources into them. Madness. Can't expect some good to come of this. Is it's gonna be all bad. Okay, shout out to my man. Everybody hates poke in the building. Poke, we seen you up there last night cooking, brother. We see y'all going correct me if I'm wrong. Make sure y'all go over there and check out last night. Go to correct me if I'm wrong. Subscribe to his channel. They was cooking last night. It was getting out of hand over there. I see. <laughs> hey, Poke. Hey, Poke, you took me out. They said, hey, let's have Willie and Gavin up. Poke said, you better be careful what you ask for. <laughs> We don't want no smoke. Listen, yeah. I'm kind. I'm God fearing. What yeah, let's get a poke. That's Gavin. They worried about. I'm not. I'm. I'm nice. I. <laughs> I'm nice. I'm kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But salute, brother. Appreciate you for checking in, stopping in, checking out the content. We definitely appreciate it. But yeah, this woman here, man. Huh? It's all bad. Po child. Po child. Ever been married? Nope. All right, so let's start from the beginning. So, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> hey, man. Shout out that ATL, man. All day long. Yes, sir. We love our city. All right, man. What part of Atlanta are you from? I'm going to say the south side of Atlanta. South side, man. Shout out that south side. Talking about like zone three, all like that? Okay. Oakland city. Hey, man. Shout out that big Oakland city all day. All right, and so growing up here in Atlanta, did you have both mom and dad in the household? I had, I most, well, when I was little, me and my sister. Okay, so my mama got six kids, and we got split it up when we was little. Was it because of defects? Yes, it was because of And here we go. They got split it up, split it. Whatever split she said, it. that happened. Mama was in defects, which if y'all don't know, that's like the Atlanta, you know, home ser child services whatever they call it this so uh, we gotta split it up mama has six kids here we go and yeah when and then the folks come in then you gotta get split it up yeah you know what i get it i was in two foster homes growing up me and my little sister and i made sure we didn't get split it up because that's unfortunate that's the last thing you want to happen with your siblings going into that system Okay. If you because it's you don't know you're going with strangers, it's a whole deal, and I know that's tough. These these po I feel for any girl in the system by themselves, right? and they get you get split it up. That's the worst huh. thing that can happen because ain't no foster parent about to take six kids. That's why ain't about to happen. Ain't one, no stranger, but we got one somebody take two, somebody take one. We got no person, and we gonna start chopping y'all, chopped and screwed. Yep, and y'all gonna be all over the place, and these are not norms. These are not rites of passage. These things are traumatic, and the trauma all on this poor child's face. She, God bless her, you know, she appeared to be a little, you know, what I'm saying a couple, a couple eggs short of an omelet to keep it nice, and going through the system and all that. That's not a place for a child, especially not a little girl, man. You know oh, what's man. amazing to me? Something that I haven't done, don't I? Maybe you, not me, that all of these women we are reviewing, they all got to be crossing paths at some point. They probably know each other. They're all in the same city. This they dude are. ain't traveling the country. He ain't going overseas. He wake up in the morning and driving downtown. And this is amazing. This is astonishing. It is. These is young Wait. black girls. Y'all talk about black girl magic? The hell? This is dark magic. Dark as hell. You right. They definitely see each other. That's you right. He right in Atlanta. He ain't going to no other cities or states. He right in Atlanta. He ain't going nowhere else. Defects. 
fast. So me and my sister that's like older, a year older than me, we was living with our father or whatever. We was traveling to houses to houses. Right. With his girlfriend. With his, okay. So we ain't really want to be with him. We want our mom. Because, I mean, she was the only one that can like feel what we was going through. So... Well, I mean, I, I hear I heard the little quiver in the voice right there. Um, Why did you get emotional when you was talking about that just now? Okay, so my father, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a shortcut. Okay, so my father, my sister, both of my sisters, my oldest one and the one that I was recently just with, that's older. So. Is he the biological father? He's the f biological father. Of uh, both of them? Of uh, me and my other sister that's older than me. Okay, so you and the one that's directly older than you, he's the biological father? Yeah. And so, and also... And here we go. So mama had six kids, and he fathered at least two of them. Y'all got y'all can't just be bringing these men into these homes. We talk about this. All this stuff we touch on, this is this is like a merry-go-round. We just keep touching on this stuff, and we're going to keep doing it. But y'all must understand, we've been sounding this alarm. Yeah, we, we joke about Nug Nug, but Nug Nug is, he is capable of some egregious acts that ain't funny at all. No, yeah, it's, it's some dark shit that come with Nug Nug at times. This girl and, got, some, got some stuff on. She like... My daddy done great my sister. Like she got to deal with that. Yes. <laughs> it's talking about, she when they was with him, he was moving from house to house with his girlfriends. This is nug nug. This is this is unstable, all messed up couch negro nug nug. It's their father. And he ain't got no morals, no grounding. The and here's the thing. She they and these po child, po child, she talking about she want to be with her mom. Do you not understand that your mom is Part of the reason you in this situation, the accountability in her is very high. The fact that defects or whoever had to come in and get y'all out, and now y'all end up with folks decided that y'all was better off with y'all devil of a father than with y'all mom. That means a lot. Your and mom I'll tell you what, I was gonna institute the cart before the horse um pregnancy plan, if you will, or the cart before the horse, some type of control on this. And we talked about this. I said, giving having children is an honor and it you it's a privilege. Yes. So it's not for everybody. And when we first started this podcast, I was on the record as saying everybody should not be allowed to have children. Yes. You should have to have to go through some type of test. At you can't just buy a car without having a credit score or buy a house mm -hmm. without being pre-approved. You can't do a lot of stuff in this life, but you can just have children and there's no baseline test. No, I want to institute something. You got to have, listen, your credit score got to be at least, we come up with a number, 650, whatever, at minimum. 650-ish, yeah, minimum. You got to do at least 20 hours of training on being a parent and see if you really want to do this, right? There you go. And, and such things. There got to be guidelines. For you to be pre-approved to have this child. I think everybody should have some form of birth control in them, men and they, women. And if they, you do pass this test and you're eligible, they remove it from you. You can have some children. There you go. And and what would be the argument, the ultimate argument? They may say, well, Mr. Walker and Gavin X, y'all asses shouldn't be here too. And that's what y'all don't understand. We suffer from the Thanos effect. We don't care as long as we start making this right. There you go. Let's start moving the right direction. And if that meant Mr. Walker and Gavin X never existed and the community would be in a much better place, then so be it. Yeah, we ain't no selfishness selfish. over here. There you go, y'all. Selfish. Don't be so selfish. The greater good. Whatever happened to the greater good. Bingo. It's about me, 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 my, my, my. Don't you see? So yeah, if if that if that clause was instituted, her mom would not been allowed to have all these children, and this young lady would not be on this video right now. I'm trying mm -hmm. to tell y'all. Talk to me if you hear me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, your sister that's older than her, he did that too as well. Mm -hmm. 
What age? What age did, did he do this? I mean, how old were you when you? How old were you when he did this to them? I was like, okay, so I wasn't born when my older sister was, but she was five years old, and I guess she told my mom, and my mom told the whole family or whatever. So they said they didn't want us to live with him or whatever. So um, then, how did how did it happen to your sister that's right above you? I'm, I'm gonna say when he was living with his one of his friends or whatever, he was kind of drunk or whatever. And you know, kids, we take naps or whatever. So I guess when my sister was asleep or whatever, and she was trying to wake me up, she was like, uh, Mari, um, daddy touching me. I was like, what you mean? She was like, daddy was just rubbing all on me. I was like, uh-uh, we can't, we can't be in here. Cause How old were you then? I was like three. Okay, how much older is she than you? She was like four. Okay, she's like a year. Huh? What is she talking about? This is insane. I thought she was about to say I'm like 15. We ate three and four. Y'all having this conversation? She was doomed from the start. If this is true, you can't recover from that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What? What do we oh expect God. to happen with these children? You can't expect these children to grow up to be lawyers and doctors and nurses and teachers. No, they grow, they grow up and they just simply walking casualties. Can okay, nobody really help? Not in today's society. No one can really help them because everybody's so damn selfish. This she talking about we three and four. We in here talking about how daddy. Don't That's you know, stuff. with such a with such a sensitive topic, I don't want to say that the young po child is telling stories, but I, but who remembers things from when they was three and four? When is uh, like that's what I'm saying. Like talking about three and four, like I'm serious. Like a child's first recollection, first memory of things, like around four or five. She's saying they three and four. I. I don't know. I was she she got trauma. That's undisputed. Let's say she got trauma. Yeah, because she she really don't have a good grasp on time. It's because he keep asking her about time periods and stuff, and she ain't got a good grasp on time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she she shouldn't have to try to remember these things. There ain't no excuse for it, you know. But we see how dark it get. Nug nug, and like I said, we we have uh learned to laugh through this madness. But Nug Nug has some dark, some there's some dark holes right behind holes with Nug Nug. It ain't all funny because he broke and dusty. No, Nug Nug get alcohol in him. He's a nuisance. He, he's a nuisance. We talked he, about that before, like the coyote. He's a nuisance. Bag and tag Nug Nug. Keep him away from everybody. That's it. Bag and tag him. Oh, Don't productive ask people. Anybody want to be productive? You got to keep Nug Nug away. Yes. So you like that, Nug Nug. Nug, nug Nug in Super Saiyan form will move to any neighborhood and impregnate every woman there, no matter what color ethnicity, and, and get all I'm about to say that everywhere. Nug yeah, Nug, every here we go. A little bit off topic. Nug Nug is most prevalent if y'all know anywhere, if you're from like Ohio, Pennsylvania, some of these places, and you go into these back uh, country steel, these old steel country places. Where there ain't a lot of black folks, let's leave it at that. Nug Nug will go in and he'll move in with some fentanyl or some shit and be down there selling whatever. And next thing you know, Nug Nug start knocking up every young uh, Becky in town. Next thing you know, this town that looked like, you know, Kansas, right? It, everybody half breeds all of a sudden, besides Paw Paw and them, and they ain't happy. Cause Nug Nug then came in with some Molly and fentanyl, and he passing that out. He knocking them up. He just wow. He a whole play. Funny stuff. We done seen this play. You drive into these cities, and it's nothing but Becky. Becky's in Nug Nugs, half breed children. Everybody strung out. Nug Nug come through like a tornado. Nug Nug on community. top. And on top of the pecking order, like I said, Paw Paw and them two old to grab his shotgun and do away with Nug Nug. All of the above. But, but like I said before, that's the best place for Nug Nug. 
I I feel like yeah. people that see Nug Nug out the out that way. I'm like, Nug Nug, go there because at least you balancing things out. You balancing the ecosystem out, Nug Nug. That's how I look at it. Sins of the father. Yeah. Sins of the father. We. <laughs> There we go. That's a whole you're right. So that's a whole nother rabbit hole, but sins of the father. Then he gonna get what you're gonna get. But we are here to control Nug the infestation of Nug Nug in our community. All right. We gotta stop because Nug Nug producing these pole broken babies. And we gotta stop. We can't keep turning a blind eye to it. You're older than you yeah. type do. Okay. So Okay, so as far as the situation goes with your mom, right? Is that your mom who I met? No, that's my sister. That's your sister? That's okay. the one that's after the oldest one. Okay, okay. That's not the one that he did it to. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, so basically those was like his stepkids or whatever that he did that to? Like not your he sister, was, but his, the even, older sister. I'm going to say he wasn't even claiming it. She, my older sister already had her father involved. I mean, her father got involved with my father because of what happened to his daughter. So they got into an altercation. The whole family put it like that. Got into an altercation with my own um, father. So that's why they don't talk to each other no more. And the last time I seen my father was this year. Well, last year, March 5th, 2022. Yeah, that was the last time I seen my what father. Was, what was that meeting like? I'm gonna say it was okay. We were still in the hotel, but it's like when I was talking to him, he he wasn't listening. He was like, "Why you won't come stay with me and stuff?" I'm like, "Because I don't trust you." I mean, you. Did what was something. his response to that? He was like, "You still gonna be in this same situation? I'm trying to help you and stuff." It's like I, I can't trust my father. So. Did, did he ever go to jail or anything for that? He went to jail. I'm going to say he went to jail March March in 2016. Well, no. I mean, did he go to yeah. jail for that stuff? Yeah. When did he, I don't really remember. You, you was like a kid, right? Yeah. So, okay, I get it. I get it. I really, know, I really don't know what was going on. I was really being like little quotes and stuff, what my mother was telling me. So it's like, it made me remember, thank harder. Where's so, your mom at now? She is with her fiance. She is engaged to a new man and my, and my brother. Dun, dun, dun. It took all this video. I've been waiting. Bring mama out. Bring her out. Bring her out. This is too familiar of a story. Y'all know what this is. Mama got six kids. Mama can't sit still. Mama chasing men. Y'all know these women. Mama, y'all know these women between the age of maybe 45 and 55, 60. That generation of women, they gonna chase men to they dying days or to it to they run dead smack into that wall. So her mama, she said she still got my brother with her. She keeping one of her kids with her that she that's sure. probably old enough that she can get food stamps and stuff for. She got this quote unquote fiance, and uh, she don't care about none of her other kids. She sent y'all with grandma, defects, but mama doing okay. She said that with a smile. Mama ain't doing so bad. Not mama. The guy <laughs> Nocracy is beating his chest right now. Man, the the power of the guy Nocracy is undeniable. Where. This post sister so strong on the order 66, she still has yet to say anything negative about the positions her mother has helped put her in as far as her ain't shit daddy who needs to be uh, dealt with accordingly. And this whole homeless situation, the mom just sitting pretty with her new fiance, that don't make no sense. At all, no sense at all. But can't say nothing bad about mama. Refuse to say anything bad about mama. Still, I said it. Ain't said nothing. You know the, the daddy, he's condemned. That's done. 
mom, nothing yet. Don't don't ain't gonna judge mama for laying with that dude. He Would always been. That? And if we got people of other cultures that is watch our content, I know y'all scratch your head a lot of times. Okay, because this is backwards. In no other culture does mama have this much goddamn power. Y'all, you normally know thinking of daddy. Everybody's afraid of daddy. Mm -hmm. Everybody afraid of the matriarch. I'm sorry, the patriarch. Mm -hmm. Not the matriarch. The matriarch is in possession now. Yes, it is. The <laughs> culture is a patriarchy to where they worry about what dad gonna say. Mama say, "Go ask your dad." Everything is with dad, and then they can watch this stuff and they say, "What are y'all talking about? Y'all don't get it. It's reverse. It's mama. It's yeah. a matriarchy. It all ends with mama." Big mama, mama make the rules. But mama say goes all that. Happy wife, happy life. Woman of the house, all that nonsense. <laughs> Empty titles, because at the end of the day, what do they produce at the end of big mom's and, and big auntie's life? What is produced? Nothing. There's no resources left behind whenever... Whenever the gynocracy falls, there's no order. There's no structure. The movie, Soul Food, it shows, and it's a couple movies that show it. When Big Mom passed away, there was nothing left. Everything fell apart because until Big Mom's dying day, she held all power and authority in her hand, and she refused to hand out to anybody. And a lot of times, Big Mom be beefing with her own daughters. That's sick. That's sick. That is sick. So when the gynocracy falls, it all falls. That's what we are experiencing, folks. These Atlanta Street interviews and things of the like, what you are, this is like, this is like uh, one of the sagas to Star Wars. This is the fall of the gynocracy. All right. Big Mama Strike Back ain't, ain't come out, can't come out yet. This is the fall of that gynocracy. All right. This is where we at. Chapter one. Here we go. We in full fledged. Winter is here. All that. Observe. She's engaged to who? She's engaged with her new man. Uh-huh. And my little brother. Okay, how old is your little brother? He's 17. 17, so he's still a minor, so he's living yeah. with her? Huh. <sighs> okay. Okay. So, and I guess they don't have enough room for you to live there? No. So, basically, she want me to, like, get on my own. So, let me ask, I mean, so... Okay, so as far as who raised you, right? Mm -hmm. So, at what point did your dad raise you? Because you, it sounds like you was over there for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say ever since I turned four, and that's when we moved to good Oakland morning. City. Hey, good morning. Friends. How are you? I'm well. Please, I'm trying to find uh, where the mega bus. The uh, mega bus. Yeah. And you're gonna go down about two or three blocks. Okay. Thank okay? you so much. No doubt. You make sure you have a good one. <laughs> All right, sorry for the quick interruption. Smile. <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to figure out because, so how, uh, in between what ages and what ages did, were you living with dad? Since I was two to four. To what age? Two years old to four. Two to four, okay. And then after that, who'd you live with? My mom. Mom? And then at what point did you go to defects? I really ain't really go to be fast. They just wanted us to like be with someone that's closer to us, like a spouse or some like a cousin or a family member. Why so, not? Who's closer than your mom? What do you mean? I don't get that. Okay, so our cousin on her dad's side. So they, my sister, my other siblings, they moved with my cousin, me and the oldest one. Well, the one that's older than me. Right. We moved with our daddy because, I mean, she had to get herself together. Okay, so she had some stuff going on yeah. to where she had to get her God bless this brother. He be going so hard to pull this information. She is not about to put no stain on her mama's name. She no. She will not. He keeps saying, he said, who did you grow up with? Oh, I live with my daddy from two to four. Then what'd you do? Well, my mama. Okay, he said, well... What did this point happen when you end up in defects? How'd you end up in defects? Uh, 
and then it started getting real foggy. <laughs> yeah. And she yeah. said, when well, they tell you you need to go to the closest family member, a spouse, he said, who closer than your mama? Why didn't you go with your mama? Yeah, what happened? Like, oh, well, mama had to get herself together, being, you know, that she had a hanker for crack rock and all. <laughs> tell it like it. T.I. is, post sister. This is all bad. So defects come in, and she said she wound up with a uncle on her mom or daddy said something like that, and the kids got split up amongst the family members. And that's usually how it go. You end up defects or whatever child protective services step in, and they say, okay, what family members are around that y'all kids be, can be around familiar people? And if no one steps up, then you end up living <laughs> with strangers so i guess that's good they didn't end up living with strangers that's good but like you said this poor this interviewer had to dig it out like okay two to four dad and then from there you was with your mom but you well, just well, told you us said, you said that's good they didn't go with strangers we're gonna rewind that they, <laughs> they went with a monster who was great on everybody so i would say they probably was better off in the system See what I'm saying? And that shouldn't even be a statement. It should be impossible to sit up here and say it is much. It would have been better for them to go live with strangers than to live with their own father. That should never be a statement. But it is. It's actually it, this that proved to be true in this instance. And that's just madness. But mm-hmm. but like Gavin was saying, the gnocracy is so powerful. She refuses to touch on you know, the turmoil in her mom's house and what was going on. Your mom was on heavy rocks, probably out here hoeing it, all that. You can't act like it didn't happen. And why not? Why is it so important to address these things? This daddy hurt and mom hurt, what well, the daddy need done away with. But this mom hurt because don't, because when she passed away, y'all have seen it. Family members, elders pass away and there be grudges and beef and unresolved conflict and now that person passed away now you got to live with that post sister you got to live with those those apologies you never got from your mom and that will kill these poor women they not built for that you gotta you gotta have the conversations talk stop letting that those generational curses pass down had the conversations let that woman know what she did talk to her and at least get it off your chest and then be done with it. Sometimes you got to meet people where they at. But she and was so... understand your existence. You make a lot more sense while you're in this position. There you go. It'll make sense and you can move forward, move forward accordingly. Straight like that. Shout out to Tani in the building. Salute. We've been up here cooking tonight. We got this young lady out. You know, and we're going to finish hearing her story here. And see what else she got, cause this is this is bad. Stuff <laughs> together, okay. I get it. I get it. Okay. All right. Um. And so, like, you know, would you say that you had a fairly normal childhood growing up? I would say it was a 50-50. 50-50? But I'm gonna say it's thirty-seven, seventy percent negative. It was good. Oh, 70% good? Okay, 30%. So, I mean, did anything else ever happen to you, like, in in regards to that? No. No? Okay, so, did you, like, go to high school? Yes, I went to high school. I went to Tri-City High School. Graduated? Shout out that Tri-Cities. Did you graduate? I'm going to say no, but I know I went to summer school. Did you graduate? I'm going to say no, but these are direct questions that require direct answers. Y'all live in this goddamn blurred line world where y'all can just make make the rules as y'all go. Uh, I'ma say my uh, red fish, blue fish, one fish, two fish is what I'm gonna say to your question that you just asked me. Yeah, you know, did I graduate? Well, you know, you go to school five days a week, and you know, <laughs> it's. Never gonna give a direct answer, and it's this that's that's the least of this poor child's worries. It's over, she ain't got many answers to any of the questions she got in life. It's all bad. Her dad need to be <laughs> reprimanded in the most harsh way, 
and she has yet to you could tell she has her mom that kicked her out for her new bay could be a prison bay most likely is a prison bay a uh, prison bay couch nug nug most likely this ain't this ain't mr amazon this ain't mr pipe fitter no 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 you're wrong or even mr 40 hours a week as we described yeah there we go that's the title yeah mr 40 hours a week ain't walking up in that house yeah this ain't at all yeah, no. so, salute shout out to mr diz in the building said what's up brothers uh no accountability you know yeah it's it's getting yeah i thought that was into her story but she won't stop apparently it's be like a she like that damn uh bunny with the door cell battery in that commercial they don't stop they keep going and going and going <laughs> all gas no brakes because we're still in the same predicament. I get the it. Hotel the, predicament, yeah. So. What um what was the highest grade you got to? Twelve. Twelve? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, you know, you basically I guess you kind of dropped out just because yeah. of the situation, the housing situation. Yeah. So okay, far, so so I mean, you know, what is the ultimate plan, right? We're 19 years old. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Um, like have you had relationships and stuff like that? Do you have a boyfriend right now? Anything like I that? I have a boyfriend right now. You have a boyfriend? We not closer, closer because he's staying with his mom. And like, he been visiting me every little hotel that we've been to or whatever, sometime. So basically, he getting a job so he can like get a house or whatever. So How he, old is he? He's 18. 18? Yeah, he's, he's young. Little you younger than me. Okay, okay. Um, all right, well, I get it, you know. Um, you know, from time to time on these videos, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some guys, they'll look at the videos, they'll be like, oh man, she's cute, she's pretty, this and that. And they'll try to get in touch with you. Um, if, if a guy tried to get in touch with you and wanted to date you, would that be something that you'd be open to? It depends on your age, and it depends on how you're higher energy is what's the food. age range that you're looking for 20 because i ain't hit 21 yet so you got to be at least like a year old or the same 20, 20 up to what 20 to 21 <laughs> 20 to 21 <laughs> this is blasphemy we said this before homeless and dating is not a thing it just really ain't and we ain't gonna make it a thing no we and, ain't and yeah. why why, why, what's, so here we go. What are the cons or the consequences to attempting to date while homeless? What do you got? What, what's the cons? What could go wrong? Yeah, that was. <laughs> like, you know, you, your, <laughs> your hand is, your hand, hand is out and exposed. You homeless. So I do be like, I know all I need is to come with some inkling of a resource and I'm gonna have my way. You ain't got much resistance to put up, post sister. You ain't. That's why. Do not date while homeless, men or women, because it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. Don't do it. Yeah, before you know it, you yeah, you gonna be out there. You gonna call yourself dating, and a brother gonna pull up in a long Cadillac with a top hat with a feather in it. See what I'm saying? And the rest will be history. You better there be you go. There you go. You homeless. He's like, okay. Yeah, we're going to date and Mr. Top Hat and, and, and Shiny Suit. Y'all going to go out and you understand you're going to be introduced to a profession as old as time itself. Huh. And it's undefeated. And you won't have much resistance because if you hurt for resources, Mr. Mr. Slickback know exactly what you need. Yes. Yeah. So, like you said... A lot of these people, you don't want them to come on here, like you said, and be all down and be. But I see a lot of joy. These people are more joyous than people who do well in life, I guess. Like and like I said before, people gotta go to sleep at night, so they gotta make their realities whatever they gotta make it. Yeah, I definitely get that, but you gotta, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be in touch with reality. Yeah, you can't be out here just walk around smiling through the bull hell of bullets. You can't be doing that. 
You got to show some concern for your life and livelihood. Show, like I said, show some humility. Like, look, I'm on the clock. I, you know, something. Show something, because these these folks out here, they just they just don't seem to really give a dang, and I don't get it. And shout out to Rashina, and like she said, she's gonna get pregnant and still be homeless, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Yes, <laughs> that she got on her side. She ain't got no kids yet. That is the only silver lining here, especially knowing who her biological father is you know like holy smokes so yeah that's that's the only thing she got in her favor she can move and shake however she need to you know good luck to her but it's all it's all bad i tell yeah, you I what, give her, her final words here i don't know give her maybe 20 to 30 seconds we'll see i'm a, here we go that's a yeah. small window <laughs> until i'm really like ready to get out my shot stage to deal with the older men but it's like I'm skeptical to you know talk to people I get it. I oh, get it. I guess what, the one thing that I'll hair say situation is, you know, is bad up under that. Don't get pregnant. <laughs> don't get pregnant in this situation. Um, I mean, do you plan on finishing school, getting your yes, either your GD? GD uh, okay. Um, do you plan on going to college? Yes. Okay. What do you want to study? Cosmetology and culinary. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. And so, I mean, as far as the, it goes, you know, what are we doing at this point to try to get ourselves out of this position of being homeless? Example. What you mean? So like um so are we are we making any moves to try to yes. so like have we applied for a housing voucher? Have we got into any of the programs? Have we done any of that stuff or what have we done or haven't done? So I'ma say we try a lot of Oh, this post sister. He said, What are you trying to do to get out of this situation? She said, What do you mean? Exactly. <laughs> She said, give me something. She said, give me an example. What do you mean? Yeah, give me an example of what you mean. Uh stop being homeless. Yeah, what do you mean get out of this situation. And and she just told us all we need to know about her state of mind. She's like, what are you talking about? Get out of this. This is where I'm at. <laughs> this is where I be. I ain't got that far. Can't can't think straight. Don't know which way is up. And I get it. It's all understood. The situation is understood. But it ain't accepted. That's all. It's understood. We get it. We see how these dots connect. We see how you're in a bad way. Just not accepted. Can't can't be out here with no plan. And there you go, Rasheen in the car. She said she's still a kid. And that's pretty that was my point. I wasn't trying to like make fun of her, if you will. I was mm -hmm. trying to say, like, that's a child's aunt. She's a yes. kid. She can't even contextualize what he's saying. Like, what are you trying to do to get out of the situation? She's like, what? And this hit on what I said before. They are nose blind to the situation a lot of times. Okay. Understanding this as bad as it truly is. Y'all must understand. So this what happened? Is, what happened to the blind uh grandma's boyfriend? Hey, because she's still throwing this we around. I don't know if she's yeah. still she's still yeah. saying we literally to this point. So far, we know this brother is somewhere behind her sitting in a wheelchair. You see what I'm saying? That's like <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, give her five more seconds. See if she spit it out. Housing people, most of them, they tell me something they couldn't help. Let me ask. Uh, let me ask it this way. Okay. So, as far as it goes, is this? And there we go. Just to hit on this real quick, she said the housing people said they couldn't help. Why? Cause she ain't got no damn kids. This is crazy. Holy, you right. Work. You're right, because it would be naturally women with children would get housed first. Because all that, they give you a date and say, look, all right, it's going to be 30 days. And they simply told her, we can't do nothing for you. You're a single homeless person. you able body. Like, we got no smoke for you. Yeah. You don't walk in here with a chilling or or a little a litter or whatever. Mm -hmm. You got assistance for you. So now in her mind, y'all must understand the subconscious. She gonna say, I need a kid. I need one fast. Because here we go. Like Gavin said, I'm out here by myself. I can't get no assistance. I'm having a bad way. But if I go out here and get knocked up and have a kid, 
resources gonna start coming out the woodworks. I shall get shelter, food, stipends, all of the above. What is my best option? It just I'm gonna have me a kid, and I'm gonna have fun in the process. I guess you know to to get on my feet. I'm gonna have a kid. I'm gonna bring a kid into this situation to get on my feet. Is that not one of the most selfish things you've ever heard? In order for me to be in a better situation, I'm going to bring a kid into this so that I can be eligible for benefits. And I know how y'all rock. Y'all come in here and it's systematic and all that. And I get that part, but it doesn't have to be. There you go. The system is in place, but you don't have to fall into the trap. There you go. Yes, it's all systematic, all of the above. Systematic. To the to the tenth power, yes, yes, and yes, but there ain't no excuse. If you don't understand the tone over here yet, and, and it the tone is, we do not agree with the victim Olympics. There are no victims over here. We gotta take the knowledge that we are being presented with, and put our best foot forward. Straight like that, I get it. Like said, there ain't no victims, but this is a poor baby, so. I'm gonna let her rock out. No two seconds. We go. We gonna get out of here. I know it's getting late for y'all. How how many? So I just met you guys in the line here at Crossroads. Okay, um, is this like your first day out here type deal? I'm gonna say this my second time because I did got my ID here with okay. Crossroads because they did gave me a voucher, but I recently lost my ID in social last year, so I came back to here to see if they can help me get my social and ID. And so as far as it goes, like, are you guys, like, y'all have a place to sleep tonight? Yes, we we at my sister friend's house. Okay. He so got you, his little house. Okay, so you got a room and you got yeah. a place and everything. Okay. All right, all right. Well, I, hey, listen, I can dig it, man. Well, listen, we really appreciate you yeah. taking the time, answering all of our questions. Um, If anybody out there wanted to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? Okay. My cash app? I just recently had to mail my cash up because somebody stole it. But y'all. So there we go. If you're feeling generous, hit her cash apps on the screen. If you're feeling even more generous, hit our cash app. It's on the screen. Car Before the Horse Productions. We appreciate y'all for coming through tonight. Before we go.